Most importantly, a good pair of strippers. This is an excellent pair made by Clyde Tools. You don't want to use something like this. This is an all-in-one tool. It strips, it cuts, it crimps, it slices, it dices. It doesn't really do anything well except cut screws. Get a tool that's made to strip only. This is what you want. Also, you need a nice razor knife. Make sure the blade is sharp. You get your wire from the wire bin, the scrap wire. Don't use the wire off the rolls. We use that for our projects. Here is the tape you're going to need, the Scotch 33. We have that. And the Scotch 23 rubber insulating tape. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate the proper way to strip a wire. This is number 14. If you look on your strippers, this says, this says stranded, this says solid, so I want to take this to the solid 14, put it in there, crimp it down, release it just a bit, push off with my thumb straight. When you strip, you want to see that there's no ring neck right here from the strippers, because if you cut that, it's going to make the wire um, break. Now, let me show you how not to strip wire. You've probably done this or seen people do this. They do that twisting action. That twisting action causes that ring neck, and that ring neck will make the wire break. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to do the two-wire pigtail. That's probably the most common splice you're going to do as an electrician. It, it puts together two conductors. Now in the field, if I was going to splice these together, I'd only strip it about an inch and a half and do the splice. But because you guys are learning, I want you to strip it about three inches. And that way it'll make it easier for you to handle the splicing. Once you've got your wire spliced, before you do anything else, you want to inspect it to make sure there are no ring necks. Once you know there's no ring neck, put the two wires together so the insulations match and just fold it down. Grab your lineman pliers and twist clockwise. You must twist clockwise. Now, if you're left-handed, you may have an issue with that, but you're just going to have to learn. There's plenty of left-handed electricians out there. Now, you want to twist that wire until you get a nice, even twist all the way down the wire. You do not want to over-twist the wire because it will cause the wire to break, and it stresses the wire, and if you had to add a wire to it, you wouldn't be able to. You'd have to cut it off and start over. Now that I've got my wire twisted, I just want to set it down because you're going to have to make five of these. So do not cut it to length yet. When you do cut it to length, however, you would then cut your wire to about five-eighths of an inch. And later on, I'll show you how to finish off this wire. Okay, the next splice you're going to do, another common one, is the three-wire pigtail which puts three wires together. Again, remember to check your wire to make sure you don't have any ring nets. Now for the three wire pigtail, it's a little bit more difficult because it's an odd number of wires that are going together. So put your insulations together and then take two wires and cross them over one with the insulation together. Bend it down. Grab it by your line mints and begin to twist it, always grab it in the same spot. Until you get a nice even twist. Don't mind if you have a problem here because your end result is gonna be this. This is what we're looking for right here, okay? And that's a nice even twist on that wire. It's not over twisted. That's a three wire pigtail. You're gonna make five of those also. The last pigtail is the four-wire pigtail. you think the four-wire pigtail would be the hardest, but it's not. The three-wire is actually harder than the four-wire because now we have an even amount of wires twisting around each other. Again, you want to match up your insulations, bend the wire down. Now, if your wire is too long here, just trim it a little so you get an even grip. Now I've got a grip, so I'm just going to grab it with my linemen and start twisting again. We always twist clockwise, whether we're twisting wire or whether we're twisting high wire to uh, strap something down. Again, 
you want to get a nice even twist. Also, notice how I open and close my alignments using my pinky, okay? And again, when you're done with all five wires, you would trim them to length, and there you have your uh, completed splice. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is a shepherd's hook. A shepherd's hook is a hook that we put on the wire to terminate to the screw terminal of a device. And to do that, you want to strip your wire about three quarters of an inch long. Then you want to take the wire without moving it, grab it at the end with your needle nose, and just bend your needle nose. And then what you got is you got a nice smooth round transition here. And the tip of my wire here is not going beyond the installation here. So that's where we want to be. And to check it, what you can do is you take your device, put your shepherd hook on there, your insulation's ending at the edge of the device, and it fits underneath the screw perfectly. That's the shepherd's hook. You need to do five of those. Okay, the next type of hook we're gonna do is called the terminal eye. It's a little more complex than a shepherd's hook, and the terminal eye is used when you have a uh, screw, terminal, or stud that the wires have to go onto. So first you want to do is you want to make sure that your wire is just about an inch long. So I got my wire an inch long. I'm going to grab it with the needle nose, giving myself about 3 sixteenths of an inch right there away from the insulation, and I'm going to bend a 90. So now it's at 90 degrees. Then from there, for all you motorcycle enthusiasts, you want to grab it at the end there like that and rev up your bike, just twisting your wrist, okay? Don't move the wire. Then you grab it into the center and finish it off, and it should look like so, kind of like a question mark, okay? That's called the terminal I. You need to make five of these. Okay, the next splice is a fixture splice. Fixture splice is a splice where we're taking a stranded wire with multiple strands and attaching it to a solid wire. Because all the light fixtures that you buy are gonna have stranded wire. So first you wanna strip your wire again about an inch, inch and a quarter. And you wanna take the stranded wire and fan it out. Kinda of make it flat like a witch's broom. Then once you've got the wire flat, you put it around the stranded wire and you go clockwise again. Remember, we always go clockwise. All right, I right, trim that off. Now I'm not done with this splice. I have to take the wire and fold it over and then smash it down. There we have a fixture splice. Okay, the next splice we're going to do is called the Western Union. It got its name from um, Western Union Telegraph. And what they did is they had to find a way to splice two wires together when the wires were short from pole to pole. As an electrician, you may run across some knob and tube wiring or something and may have to fix it using a Western Union. Now, notice I'm only taking it off in small chunks at a time because if I try to take all 12 inches off at once, it would be too much uh, friction. So just take small portions at a time, and the straighter your wire is, the easier it is to strip. So now here I have my two wires that we got to join together. So I'm gonna take the wires to the center and cross them over each other, okay? So I'm gonna make a cross transition and hold it with my thumb. Now I'm gonna make three complete loops that are loosely wrapped. So here's my transition, one, two, three, gonna come up straight and that's what I want to see I want to see at least three to four loops right there I prefer four but three will be sufficient now what you want to do is you want to make some tight loops now you don't want to push up here you want to put pressure right down here pushing it tight three to four times around now I prefer four so I'm gonna make a nice four there I'm gonna trim that off, smash that down because we don't want any sharp edges because we're gonna have to put 
put some insulating tape on this later. And then you want to bring those together. So that's one half of the Western Union. Now we got to do the other side. And it's the same procedure. I'm just going to take my wire. I'm going to get those three loops. One more just for good purposes. There we go. I got at least three. Now I go straight up and down again, 90 degrees. And again, tight. Spin it around three to four times. Make sure you have complete loops. Cut off the excess, smash it down, and then bring it together. Straighten it out. And now there's my Western Union. I have joined two wires together. You don't use this very often, but when you need it, it's nice to know how to do it. Okay, the next splice we're gonna do is called the T-Tap. And the T-Tap was also came about from Western Union Telegraph, is once they had their wire strung across, they needed to come down to the telegraph station without cutting into the wire. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your strippers, just score the wire, come over here about another eight inches or so, score the wire again. Now you can see the small score right there. I'm gonna take my razor knife, and it works if it's nice and sharp. Just slide it along your wire. Don't cut yourself, always cut away from your body until you hit that other, and you'll feel the bump when you hit it. There it is. Okay, now I can peel that off. And I've exposed the wire for the splice to come down. Now the T-tap really is just half of a Western Union. We're gonna start it the same way. I don't want my insulation to creep over the top, so I'm gonna keep it about a quarter inch away there. And start it again. Three to four loops. Come straight up and down. And then three to four tight. Cut it off. Smash it down. Bring it together. 